Greetings everyone, my name is Magmatic Sage, along with React7. We welcome you to another episode of the Wholesome Magmatic Podcast. We are joined once more today by Silver, Flippy, and Sultan, with an additional guest such as Mirai and Fascinating Turtle, I guess. <laughs> so last time we talked about World War II related topics, such as German guns, tactics, Japanese guns, etc. So let's take a little step back from historical realism and talk about World War II-esque related games. So for everyone today in this podcast, tell us a little bit of, uh, I guess, history or story on how you guys discovered and countered uh, World War II games. I bet like Silver has a World War II related game that he wants to endlessly rant about. War crimes. Oh, you heard it, folks. Uh, he's a uh, he's a weeaboo and a weeaboo at the same time. <laughs> so true. <laughs> hey, Silver, what are your thoughts on Foxhole? <laughs> uh, oh, you're opening yeah. that in a worms, huh? Okay. Yeah. You're opening that. And so You're, she's uh, actually going for that opening. Uh, yeah, I'm currently fucking chewing goddamn tamarind candy, but okay, but yeah. <laughs> Motherfucker, man. All right, all right, we got something. It's, gonna, kill, it's gonna be, it's gonna be an extra bitter rant. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. For the content. Well, where do I start? Where do I start? Holy fuck! Where... <laughs> so, so how do you, how did you discover uh, Foxhole? It was back in fucking 2017 when a friend of mine bought it. For me, it was, the, the entire yeah, it was it, the entire just was oh, it's a it's like a it's a really cool game. Look, factions versus factions and all that. Shit. Oh shit, all right. I didn't get into it at first, right? So, this was like back fucking like the very early wars of fucking fossil, like dead ass war fourteen, war fifteen, war fifteen was like my, one of my very first. So that's like fucking ancient, dude, ancient. That would be like fucking when your grandpa, uh, literally fucking grand. You, your grandpappy ra- ranting about Normandy. All right, dude, take your meds. Holy shit. Okay, motherfucker. Yeah, that's why we right. kind of call him oh, yeah. Little Little man. Grandpa. So yeah. So true. Sure. <laughs> so I played oh, that my game. God. For, so I played that game for a very fucking long time. Never had like the never had the proper like uh, oh shit I want to keep playing this game for like forever kind of mood. So it was like on and off, on and off, on and off. Right. War fifteen. Next. War thirty seven. Next. War fifty. And then right. War 70. War 70 was where everything like uh, uh I kind of got into it. So I was like, what fucking second second year, third year in college. It took him 70 wars to think, wow, I like this game. Yeah, because <laughs> because you know, so the only reason why I started thinking like, oh shit, I like this game was because at War at War 70, that's when I finally decided, oh you know what, let's play fucking, let's start making a clan. So. Back then, right, back in the forefather days, you know, wasn't very confident with, like, squad leading and all that shit. Until I played Postscript, um, and then met, like, a bunch of my old buddies there. Um, Postscriptum squad, Beyond the Wire, got that shit, confidence, and then all that shit built up. And then straight up, Foxhole's done. And then from Foxhole, um, there's a really good reason, there's, like, a stupid reason why the fuck I kept playing Foxhole. I will not disclose that here. Uh, and then, um... Deadass, so once that shit happened, so I started making clan. The first clan I made was like one, the 183rd. 183 CD and all that shit. So, got cooed there after like, what, uh, 10, 12, um, 13 wars with it, right? So this was like back in the day when, uh, uh, back in the day when fucking wars didn't last an entire fucking month! So. Real. Yeah, so back then it would just last like two weeks, three weeks. The, be- the best one was like two weeks, holy shit. So, back then, there was like a, there's like an exploit for tech. You know how stupid tech is in Foxhole? So, in Foxhole, right? Uh, for context for everybody. For, for fucking Foxhole. So, you have like tech trees and all that shit, which everybody, every player can vote on. And then you need like tech mats, which is aluminum, scrap, and iron alloy and all that shit, right? So, no copper, none of that shit yet. So, what happened was, uh, this god, this fucking god sent of a fucking man named Heimdall decided, oh, you know what, let's go try and fucking fuck with the system, right? So there's a thing, there's a thing in Foxhole, it's called the catch-up system. So if a faction is, like, uh, losing to tech, then the other faction would be gaining more, uh, would be able to harvest more tech. So, for, like, the next three wars, before War 75, 
that Mr. Heimdall over here uh, was experimenting like the tech. That's why that's why we have the uh, the core masters. So colonial wise, uh, we had the core masters because they're the fuck they're the fuckheads that actually decided. To, oh, you know what? Let's just you know let's fuck around with the tech and hopefully we we, we do we find something amazing. So ba basically exploiters, right? And then what happened was uh, they. We intentionally like held back on tech. We would tech like the first one, so at the very least we don't we won't die. We would just like tech enough so that we can at the very least hold our own. So and then the next we would just wait it out. We would wait it out for so fucking long. After like one week, we gathered like millions of like text mats because the wardens were already like up like ahead of tech so much. So we found out like so if you were to re so the game would respond that oh oh this faction has this amount of like tech mats because it was refined in the refinery it's it was alloy but if it was raw material it doesn't count it so there was like a specific bunker base which is the RDM uh, the RMD center so that's basically how is all the fucking tech mats that's where the all the core masters is that's like the the hot spot of like a like like a co the colonial fucking tech division and then they just said fuck it all right one week done instantly dropped all the fucking tech instantly one week light tanks we already had tanks running in the fucking wardens didn't even have fucking tanks yet they didn't even have gas yet and then we somehow ran ran there with fucking light tanks in the first week of the war which was so fucking amazing now here's the dumb part right so i'm fucking i'm, I'm fine I'm, I'm fucking saying ranting uh like praising fossil like how fucking smart can uh, some players are and then you have like a stupid aspect of like fossil the, the most dumb part of Foxhole, right, is like the player base itself. You have like the good player base, right? Oh shit, oh, I, I will work for the faction. WRONG! You're working for yourself to gain more fucking commands, but in reality, you're just slowly try, trying to cope. And, he, and then here's the, here comes the fucking kicker. Once you get into the fucking combat situ uh, situations of Foxhole, you, you will meet like a lot. And I mean a lot of stupid people, right? That, that would include you, too, because you decided to fucking fight with them. That includes me, that includes fucking Flippy, that includes fucking any, basically everybody that <coughs> that's in a fucking clan. Because we, we because Foxhole is like a full-on community-based game, meaning you need to communicate with your fucking team even though you do not fucking like them. Especially when the game is based on international, what happens when you fucking slap in a Turk and a goddamn Greek man in the same fucking squad? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. You can imagine. So there's like a, so so because of that, there's actual racism in Foxhole. I wish I was joking. Oh my god. So in the warden side, right? Back back in the day, back in the old old fucking days of Foxhole, CGC, a clan of made uh, mostly made of Chinese, like their, their godsend. Right? Oh, I yeah. heard of this. Yeah, yeah. The, these dudes are like full on like CG. Uh, they were just full on Chinese, like full. Like, literally all mainland China and all that shit. Some kids, some teenagers, some and all that shit, right? Uh, so, uh, they, they're like a very, very large clan. Literally, they can fill up an entire server. Like, they can, they can fill up like two fucking, like, hexes. Like, two regions. Just to <clears throat> maintain, build, uh, logi, and then just push. So, they could literally cover like two fronts, but they would mostly just like cover like one whole front. So, they're, they're, ve they're very big. They're very, very stupidly big. Hold on. Uh, oh my god. Me. My god. <laughs> my god. Finished... Mind your manners. You, 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 you could have just I, muted I, yourself. I think no, you had to do that. Bro. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I gotta have the. I gotta add the. Oh, for effect. the content, bro. Spice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> comedic effect. All right. And then, so additionally from that bullshit, right? And then you have a. So they were warden back then. They weren't colonial. Uh, context were mostly colonial, most of the people here. Except for fucking, I don't fucking know, Sultan. God knows. Fucking, I don't know what's running <laughs> in his mind. And then, um, so they, they used to be fucking warden, right? Until somehow, the wardens were able to drive the largest man, one of the other largest manpower in the entire game away from them. Because, well, you, well I'll leave that to your imagination uh, as to how they drove them off. But it revolves around Shannon Square and a lot of fucking Asian racism. <laughs> but then again, you have to understand, the fucking wardens literally house Nazis. 
So I was wearing my kind of people, for real, for real, on god, on god. Yeah, I know, I, I know for a fact you're a wearable, fuck. But yeah, dead ass fucking Nazis. Like, I wish I was joking. Like, full on Nazis and everybody would just accept them, right? And then you have, like, the fucking cold, well, le more cultured, less cultured fucking colonials that just, you know, at the very least have, col uh, at the very least have fucking social, social manners, unlike those fuckheads, like, in the wardens. Dead ass, like, fucking full, full degens, right? Wardens were mostly full degens. For example, fucking Miko. You have Miko here. Fucking, you know how he is. <laughs> Nobody knows who he is, but yeah. <clears throat> and then, uh... <laughs> and then when that shit happens, so they got drove off, done. They went fucking colonial, done. And then here's the thing. Nobody fucking communicates with them because nobody fucking speaks Chinese. So they just like, fuck, okay, yeah, I agree. Because the fucking wardens already have a large fucking regiment, which was the 82DK. God, I hate those fuckheads because they, they're the ones that actually do like the horrible exploits. So, War 75 was supposed to be... War 75 is a fake war. War 75 was cancelled because the 82DK decided to fucking dupe glitch. And then the devs caught on to it. And then uh, they cancelled War 75, uh, technically, so War 75 became War 76, and so War 100 is technically one, War 101. So, yeah, <clears throat> that shit happened. Uh, but yeah, fucking Fossil, god, I hate it. And then, and then now, 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 they fucking decide to add more Logi, when everybody was already fucking ranting about Logi. But before the new Logi shit, everybody was already la- Everybody was excited. Oh shit, new maps, new regions, bigger map, yay. Jokes on you, bitch. More logi, more roads to cover, more stupid fucking roads. I swear to God. And then, and then, motherfuckers, these fuckers decided to make building harder. Logi, more pissy, grinding tediously. And slowly eating the souls and minds of the fucking logi men, and then they decide to strike. And then 1.0 comes out. Let's add the fucking facilities. Bro. Okay. Okay. You know what? Maybe things might be easier. We have trains now. We also have the stuff. We also have a lot of other shit. Oh, the problem now you. is oversupply. <laughs> Instead of undersupply, it's now oversupply to wait, be exact. Wait, let me, let me Wouldn't that be good though? No, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. No, no, no. Mirai, 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 Mirai. You're, you're only scratching the surface of like clan man, right? That's clan man talk. But if you were to think about the entire economic system of fucking Foxhole, clan man is 40%. Random man is 60%. So they remove the fact that you could build the fucking special tanks in the garage and therefore needing a fucking facility to make them. You can oversupply on shit, but in reality, that just means more logi. They're just trying to duke you as like fucking mind game you to doing more logi and then you liking it and then delivering the fucking supplies. I swear to God. You think trains? You think having trains was the fun part? No. No. You know what pisses me off more? It's because now you need to talk and coordinate with your fucking faction. Because trains are the worst thing they've added. Because it's all player made. Have you ever tried doing rail logy with only one rail? My brother in Christ. One rail, back and forth, one rail, what the fuck's wrong with you? They don't depend on rails. No, no, because they're fucking dumb, I swear to god, because also, terrain, terrain, you can't build certain rails in certain terrains, you would have to fucking duke it out, fucking glitch it for all I care. We had to, uh, uh, me, 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 Mirai, and fucking Stalin were putting down rails for our god fucking shitty Gustav at one point. And it was pissing it. It was so pissy. It took us two hours. We thought it would take 30 minutes because, oh shit, okay, we can just like slap down the rails, slap in the, um, the, the arm mats. Done. It's all done. No, no. Nay, my friend, nay. 
you couldn't even put some of the rails on the right on fucking flat ground and then you need to climb the fucking hill there's and then there's trees the indestructible trees you can't cut down trees <sighs> Bruh. okay okay and then they decided to add the fucking gustav great 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 fuck all right Fucking, there was a stupid meta about war, it's fucking storm cannons before, and then they made it fucking mobile. Great. Uh, Thank you everyone for listening to Silver's rant. <laughs> Wait, I'm not even done. I'm not even done. I'm not even done. Oh, shut it. I'm not shut even it, fuck soul man. Shut and it, then, fuck soul man. And then my fucking, my brother is right, right. Here's the dumb part, right? If you're in a clan, man. And you have like a high rank, you're lieutenant colonel, you're general, you're fucking colonel and all that shit. A lot of, uh, most of the time, I'm not saying everybody, right? I'm just saying like most of the time, a lot of people would have a fucking ego. And I mean a stupid fucking ego. It, it, it's like the dumbest thing. It, it's like the dumbest thing. They would have an ego over this fucking game. To be fair, I kind of grew an ego because, you know, they want to listen when we're saying my brother in Christ. Calm the fuck down and don't send your fucking tanks there because they're defending it with every fucking gun looking at you. They decide to charge it anyway and then they'll fucking scream about it. They're gonna build a bridge. Okay, there's a reason why we blew the bridge. So they couldn't cross because we're underarmed. We're underprepared. We don't have shit to defend this shit properly. Fucking, fucking sergeant decide, oh, build the bridge up. No! Don't build the fucking bridge! <laughs> Stop building the bridge! I will build the bridge whether you like it or not. Stop building the fucking bridge! I will do it. And then they'll start just shooting each other. Literally fucking turmoil, man. I swear to God. People in that game are fucking brain dead. Brain rot. They do not have brains for shit. Because fucking son of a bitch just doesn't want to listen. You sounded like Chris Chan for a second there. So true. What? Who the fuck is Chris Chan? Oh, what? Oh, what? No. Oh, it, no. Let's, let's, let's just go up. there. Yeah, let's, let's just stop that, there. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, go yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is that the fucker that, uh, that, you know, the thing? Oedipus Complex manifested. Yeah, let's just stop <laughs> there. It's, 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 it's just gruesome. Like that okay, guy. But, yeah, okay, okay. But yeah, fucking Foxhole. Fucking hate that game. I love it, but I hate it. I love it and I hate it. I want to shoot the fucking devs in the face. Average War Thunder player. Because they yeah, because Foxhole is a technically a player driven game. That's and why the the core is the logistics itself. Yeah, because but everything is thing, run by right? the player. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? A lot of a lot of the times. Uh, players would suggest this thing and that thing, right? And these are really good suggestions. And then the devs just add more tanks and fucking more logic anyway. The devs don't listen. That's the thing. The devs do not listen. We're fucking making ideas here to make fucking things more easier for everybody. Oh, let's fucking have new fucking vehicles so we can build easier. I don't fucking know, like an excavator or something? Because digging trenches with a shovel is not fucking fun, I swear to god. Yeah, probably we, the devs need the rea reality check. So if My, yeah. like a lot of yeah, was... foxhole players would band together and try to do some shit to make the devs uh, make the change that they suggest. Well, there, there was a re interesting dude. There was a reason why there was a logi strike. Sure, a good amount of the times it would be fucking realistic. But here's the thing, though. Imagine doing that shit, right? You have a fucking full time job. You have a full-time job, and then you have to fucking do that shit. You're literally playing a game that requires 24-7 of uh, your, your fucking attention 24-7. That is not fucking dumb. That is so dumb. You are literally in a game where you can't even fucking chop down trees. Realism isn't fucking worth shit when fucking artillery is quite literally fucking... It literally has the same range as a fucking trebuchet. Dude! 300 Jeez. meters for a 120 mil? Come on! For real. Literally or fucking, artistic literally a trebuchet, <laughs> literally fucking a trebuchet fucking launches rock stones further, and you and then, and then there's like this dumb aspect, right? Some areas in the map you can't even build, you can't even build trenches there. You can't even like do shit, right? That's why it's so, so tedious, right? Because we we wouldn't care about like doing a lot of tedious shit 
if just so for some reason they made it a lot a lot a less less more hectic right but here's the thing building hell literally you're on flat ground you're in flat fucking terrain my friend but you can't build a fucking bunker piece because apparently there's a pebble in your way you see the point like a lot of things can be fucking be uh would be fucking tolerable and like oh shit all right sure i'm gonna dig this here but he, but, but and then there's a pebble literally fucking stopping you my god my dude bro the fuck? for real right and then you have fucking that's alts. why everyone resorted to exploits yeah and then there's fucking alts alts will just rule the game you would you would grind for material left and right right and then they, these alts will just destroy your progress and kill you and then fucking just ruin your everybody's day because all these equipment that you just fucking painstakingly made for example per se you made a battle tank that would take at least three days worth of a uh, three days worth of fucking grinding for the materials only to lose it by one single person who would drive it on the river into the river mind you but yeah there's a lot of problems in foxhole and i fucking hate it with the burning passion in my fucking heart i love the game you slaved away in that game good god yeah. So I love true. Because I love the game because we had like a lot of fucking good moments. Uh, Flippy, Flippy, me, for example, defends a uh, defend of like fucking deep law. God, that oh, was good. God. yep, man, that's uh, that's fort skill issue right there. Literally fort skill issue. We we held that. Don't forget fucking... the people. Stalin was got there actually. Shock. <laughs> yeah, Stalin was there. I remember Stalin, Stalin was there. there actually. Wait, yeah, he was. For which one? Fort skill issue, deep law. Was it in fucking Red River? No, it's in Deep Law. Blemish, my dude. It's in Blemish. Hardlands. Oh. Blemish. Like a long time ago. I think I it was care. like um. I think it was like. They uh, sound like more your... veterans right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think it's like one of your dudes that like, fucking remember it. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. One of my dudes definitely was there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was there. It was literally fucking ghost of Blemish, dude. A little tank get killed a goddamn silver. <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. And we would we defended that fucking hellhole for like one whole week. To the point where we somehow while well, even though we were continuously getting shit on, we somehow managed to build uh, turn it to concrete. It was like a double layer. Uh it was like double layer uh, bunker defenses all around the entire town. The southern part was like one layer though, so that was like the weakest point. But the hardest, the the strongest point was the the one literally in front of the road, because every time the fucking wardens would get the border base, they would just shell us to Kingdom Come. So that that's why we also had like fucking artillery ready to literally just counter uh counter counter them. We had we had it all mapped out, all coordinated. Uh, we uh, literally <laughs> literally we had it defended. We were defending that shit for like one whole week. A lot of a lot of the dudes would do logi runs. A lot of the dudes were literally on standby to get called into action. I woke up at 7 a.m. and Flippy was already online and would continually defend that shit at like 12 p.m. Dude. Oh yeah, that's we... a that's a tale, my friend. It was a tale. Ever since fucking... ever since we set up that uh, command post, we took up the uh, position to de defend deep line, build it up. Dude, the moment that we were defending deep law, we became the fucking commander. Oh, yeah, we became we became uh, we became the. Not really. We became we became one of the anchors Core. for yeah. for blemish, because uh, there was I like barony flying the same place. Yeah, yeah, there was like ba <laughs> barony. Uh, what was that place? Barony Ranch. Barony Ranch was <laughs> oh, no. at the uh, north north of end, and then mm -hmm. we got a couple of like other bunker bases down south. But uh, the western part, yeah, that was the one being hammered. That was our position. Yeah, because it was the weakest one. The northern one was like yeah. So we we decided we decided to uh, make it our own base. We essentially made the town into an entire fortification. So we built uh we built one main one main bunker base and two auxiliaries just to um just to stretch the AI defenses out, and then that's covered that's covered with three layers of concrete concrete defenses. Three la three layers, so that's like um that's three W pieces stacked in front of each other, and that it and that stretches around the entire perimeter of uh deep law. And then no aside wonder, from that, we got the uh, run out. We have a uh, we have an auxiliary uh artillery pieces scattered around the entire like a uh, bunker base itself, and then near the uh. 
And near the actual town base sits the uh, 105s, uh, 150s, the Thunderbolts. And I can tell you this, for this much, I wasted five days, is it five or three days, of defending that place. I was, I was the only CO, I was the only officer stationed in Deep Law who stayed there for at least uh, 24, 48, 48 plus 24, fucking 72 hours online. I oh had, my god. I had to oh tard wrangle. I had to tard wrangle randoms and my own regiment just to coordinate an artillery strike against to use it as counter battery to their own guns. And they went the wardens just threw everything at us. Like silver hands, iron hides, push guns. I think I think I saw somebody multi uh, multi instance a entire fucking a uh, uh, multi box yeah I think I saw a player multi box five fucking other entities and they use cutlers to PVE the uh, the defenses which at that point two of the three layers have been compromised in the uh, northwest section and we just built that up again. Never mind, it's not concrete. We just, uh, within yeah, the exactly. span of like 30, 30 or like um, 30, 20 minutes, what was once a hole in our defenses has been covered up with tier 2 defenses. We built it that quick just to respond to the numerous probes throughout the day. It's, <laughs> it's like uh, they're wondering, there was a breach in this hole for a while ago. Like, we could just post our tanks here, but no. There's, there, there's one minute, one minute, there was no defenses. Now you're telling me there's two, another two layers of tier twos? What the hell? Yeah, th th yeah that's, that's just the problem how... with uh, player driven games. Like, the chaoticness. It's a slog. The chaoticness, yeah. it just becomes a slog at that point. But goddamn, we held that entire, we held that fortification for uh, three in, uh, three real time days. Three, dude, it was five. We held, like we held three or five, five, yeah. It was five. It was five. It was five, it was five days. Jesus. It was, it was five. Monday. Non stop logistics. I don't know how many times yeah, we ran uh, out of BMATs. I keep I became, on resupplying it from Thunderfoot. <laughs> I, became, huh? I became both a uh, frontline combatant, a artillery officer, a supply officer, and a tanker in the span of five days just so I could hold deep law. And they crumbled so much. I think they like they attacked at least five or uh, four times, and they faltered, faltered throughout most of them. Mm -hmm. Dude, but yeah, on like the to... fifth day, on like the fifth day, that's when the, they pushed all of us shit in. Because I, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, we already pushed them back numerous fucking times beyond the border. <laughs> but that's just uh, that's just the. Uh, colonial politics, I guess, at this point in the, the yeah. For real. So because, we could have like... we could have held Deep Law, because before, before Deep Law fell, Barony already was suffering. It was already in the cusp of actually being fucking taken. We it held that taken. entire, yeah, it was taken at that point. We held that entire fucking perimeter, and no one, and no one else fucking came by. We literally, uh, we literally became the last remaining bastion. In oh my gosh! The, the French fucked us. The French oh, yeah. fucked and the us. French fucked us as well. Uh, so one of the one of the reg regiments within that area, right, was a French regiment. And during the last siege of like uh, Deep Law before it fell, uh, it was the French regiments that kind of fucked it over because they wouldn't ha uh, they wouldn't give up the uh, the artillery guns we set up to counter Ar Arty. And instead, they were using the fucking shells and that shit on like God knows uh, God knows what. After that, done dead. Uh, we got overrun like when everybody's asleep. Asian regiment fighting a fucking American regiment. We got we got apparently screwed over by 82 DK, like uh, one of the larger ones. So you know how like one of the probe def uh, during like the entire one week defenses, right? So we were getting probed by um, like three three big regiments. I forgot the fr the other one, but the other one 82 DK and the other one was siege. So we had the other Filipino clan. We can we also kind of fucked over Malco at one point there. And it's funny as well. They all faltered. They all faltered, yeah. They and all faltered the against the uh, 
against the, the concrete never walls. Falls. Yeah. The concrete don't, walls. Don't forget of about the entire <laughs> so they keeps on balls. ordering the logic, making more defenses. <laughs> the the bard, the bard, fucking fell before the town hall did. That's the funny thing. Mm -hmm. They tried to, uh, they tried to artillery the main town base, which was, which was near the fucking barn. I got disconnected for real, for real, on God. They just, they just fucking hit. They keep hitting the fucking barn, and then the. It got eviscerated. You couldn't even repair it anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's the sad thing. We were also using it as a, um, as a defensive position, overlooking the entire fucking road. But yes, uh, overall, Foxhole, damn good fucking game. But uh, it's sad what happened to it right now. Just God, yeah. I had so many uh, oh, true. experiences. Should I? I mean, should we? Sh I mean, that's should entire share. thing. I was I was one of the first people who uh, who actually became a member of FSL from day one. Yep. Damn. We, yeah. I'm actually I just so happy found, I fucking met Flippy. Yeah, I just that was like that was like my second war as well. <laughs> he met me when I was PTE. Dude, I fucking I recognized the fucking accent right away, and then wait. <laughs> oh, let's go! <laughs> uh, yeah, and he just started gravitating, and then asked me to like make a regiment and join his regiment. Yeah, and that spiraled out of control until we found a fucking FSL. This is um, this is how it started actually. Hold on, um, I I I don't know if you want to show this on stream, but here here are the photos. Like, I mean, I'm gonna post it in general, right? So this is how it all started. It all started from like a very very small group of men, right? Literally just a tiny bit. Slow, gradually, we started growing Damn. and growing, dead ass, and then fucking growing. What else? What is the other one? Like growing, literally. It, it was. It was. Uh, we were. Uh, oh, the one fifty mm. I love. I the was memories. very prideful about that. Literally. Hey, is it? Is it this from Barney Ranch? It is. It is. Oh yeah, it is. I see that. <laughs> look at that, Taina. Look at that. We're literally seeing new people just. <laughs> War <Growing>. memories. <laughs> it is. Oh my god! This is like the. This yeah. was like the last war, like uh, the, the very last war we've ever had. Hey, hey, Icarus is still there. Good god! Yeah, Actual war Icarus veterans, for real, for real. Oh god! Dude, look at that shit, Taira. Wait, no, hold on. Oh, hold on. Yes, this is the time that we literally are oversupplying our shit, but we kind of used it all for some. <laughs> <Look at that. laughs> me, me and Malco did that. <laughs> you fucking idiots! Good God. Me and but yeah, that was fun. These ex experiences we had, especially in tanking. Yeah. Wait, we oh, still man. lost that war, didn't we? Oh, we did. We 100 did, but it was fun. Like, look at that shit, right? We did yeah, a lot yeah, that of that was absolute flex right there. Oh yeah. Look at that shit. And right? these are the fucking tanks we used to roll over the enemy. They're really literally walking over fucking photo albums. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Memorabilia. Show that to uh, show that to the stream if you want, because um, it, it, good for context, you know. I think like the uh, you should have posted that on Facebook instead. The yeah. only related thing I could compare that to was my time in like a fucking random plan. In uh, what was it? Red Orchestra. Wow, Red Orchestra. Please. Wow, Red Orchestra. Not, that is not two. So not old. two. Red Orchestra one. Like the, oh, the OG, OG Red Orchestra. Orchestra. Yes. Yeah. Game. Oh my god. All right, please. Old, old, tell. old man gaming. So. So uh, oh, yeah, so I was well, like any other player game or player driven games is a uh, very difficult in coordinating individual players to i guess act upon a plan coordinated attack or some shit like that so, literally any mmo yeah it's uh, technically it's a world war ii mmo right so it is yeah so yeah like i guess clan leaders are having a hard time doing like real-time strategy so speaking of real-time strategy, so contrast to Foxhole, I guess majority of us here play Company of Heroes. So even Company of Heroes oh. 1, 2, <laughs> 3. So what are your thoughts on the gameplay, historical realism, mods about Company of Heroes 2, how you encountered Company of Heroes 2? So who wants to start? 
Okay. All right. All right. Let's wait. Let's uh, let's. Let's two K hours. Or I got two K hours in the fucking oh, game. Two K hours. Wow. All right. Okay. Good. I know, right? I know, right? I know, right? So that is your turn. I, I'm gonna go rest. <laughs> uh, uh, I ranted long enough. <laughs> like, I was there from the very beginning. Ever since I was a mic squeaker. I don't know how old I was when I played Company of Heroes. That w that is my first World War Two RTS. No, Company of Heroes one. Likewise, C O H one. Likewise, that's I'm why I OG. said I still have the original CD. The original is That still works. That's how old it is. And plus, it has all of the expansion, by the way. Ah, uh, I, I first found it through like a YouTube, just a random YouTube video. That's all. It, that's how it all starts. A random YouTube video, and I was like, "Oh, that's neat," but I don't, I don't have the cash to fucking buy it or anything. I was like, I don't know, seven years old, twelve years old. I don't know. I fucking forgot. So I head to my local net cafe. And then I see it. I said, holy shit, it's Company of Heroes. That's so epic, bro. So I finished the entire campaign in one uh, one sitting. And then immediately hopped onto multiplayer. I had no idea what I was doing. I had, even, even in, uh, after playing the entire campaign, I kept sending squads to their death. I did not retreat them. I did not know what a retreat button was. Wait, am I still connected? Yes, yeah. you are. Oh, fu I was scared. I was scared. I thought my internet shut out for again. So... I don't really have much to say on Company of Heroes 1, but for 2, that's, that's where it... That's where it ramped up to the extreme because uh this this steam account this one's this one's new relatively speaking to my uh time on the internet this is very this is a very new account so when i bought company of heroes 2 uh originally originally i carried over my uh stupid shit from the first game I still remember, I still remember my first match. It was a uh, White Ball. It was on White Ball Express, vanilla. I did not know what to do. I just spammed Grenadiers and got a Brumbar. And I won the match. I don't know how, but I just did. Uh, I didn't even play the campaign for the second game until I got like 500 hours in. But uh, for the gameplay, for gameplay wise, it's it's like it's like it, it it fills this small niche in like RTS. Like for other RTS, you, you produce like one one uh, soldier. You only produce like one guy. You need to queue up like fifty thousand guys for like I don't know Age of Empires, uh, Cossacks three, Red Alert. But in like Company of Heroes 2, with the Company of Heroes series, you, you produce squads. I was like, yo, that's so efficient to micro, bro. I like this shit. Why, why won't other RTS games do this shit? We need more of this. But on the other side, it's a... Uh, it's arcade, you know? It's, it's literally just Hollywood. They're fucking during playing Airsoft, uh, my dude. They're yeah, fucking it, playing... It, it, it's during, like during the time... Hunt. RTS are dying. Yeah, it was, it was right at the peak. RTS dying. Yeah, what a shame as well. Is RTS? I think RTS as a genre is still dying or dead. No, 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 no. I wager. I wager it's being. It's being revived. It's being revived. Let's see. Let's see. We have Starcraft is still. Starcraft is still very big. Still alive. Yeah, but let's see. We have. God, no. Of, Fucking, uh, uh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, uh, Company of Heroes 3, which is uh, a very poor release right oh now. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't want to talk yeah, about the game. Dude, apparently, apparently is, you can't then, uh, return the machine gun if it's in the building. Yep, it's... Wait, it's, what? Like, Company of Heroes 3. We can, we, can, we can talk about that later, but... Uh, 
we have Company Heroes 3, we got the uh, remake, I think, of Homeworld, was it? Yeah, yeah. A remake of Homeworld. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. And then, uh, there is a remake of apparently, Homeworld. Apparently, there's also a... Uh, there's also a Iron Harvest 2 in the works right now. And there was also a recent the... release of Age of Empires. Yeah. And even Age then, of Empires Age of Empires 2 is still receiving plenty of updates. Yep. It's still then, it's still uh, alive. Let's I not forget was... about the company of heroes. Uh, what company of heroes? Uh, the uh, the what was that other series again? Command and Conquer General series. Oh Red yeah, yeah, yeah. Series, the General series, the uh, Tiberium Wars. Total There's a lot of people three. still love to play those games, including me. I I, uh... I wouldn't say it, it's dying. I I would I'd say it was stagnant during like 2012 to 2016. It was just very dormant. Oh, uh, no, like it's not it. actually. It's completely the opposite. There's no under the developing games of RTS during those yeah, years. It, it bounced back it's just when it, during the right. 2017s or 2018s. I started playing Company of Heroes when I was literally a fucking toddler. Not I mean not a toddler, but I was like seven years old. Same, That's same, when same. I, um, same. That was uh, my uh, my addiction to RTS really started when it came to. Um, when it came to uh, commanding conquer generals, that's where it just stick. That me. was so true. Mine, oh, mine was red alert. alert. Mine was red alert one. Oh, red yeah, alert one. Red alert the actual one. OG. Yeah, you read the the red alert two is that the one with the. When, when my uh, when my dad first bought his very first PC, and then I was like a very small child. I, this is why I hate. I hate it. I hate. I wish I never touched a computer when I was a kid. I saw. I saw this. One game called Red Alert One. <laughs> I know it was just called Red Alert, Command and Conquer Red Alert. And then I played it. And then I just got stuck there. Yep. God. And, uh, mine would be Tiberium Wars 3. Tiberium Wars is so I got fucking Frozen Throne. Yes, instead of Red Alert, Alert. my name Frozen is... Frozen uh, Throne! Wow, Frozen Throne. Frozen Throne. Oh my god. That's just, that's just got... bringing me a lot of memories yeah. right now. Uh, anyone remember, like, Age of like, Mythology, bro? Yeah, oh! Yeah, yeah, like, oh that, that, that was the oh, shit. Oh, 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 that is otherworldly fun. Okay, uh, no, but... Nobody yeah. I got... tries to, like... Uh... Do historic, like, RTS-related mythology type games like Age of Mythology because like for example the making ice giants from Norse mythology battling out like Greek uh, colossus shit that, that that shit is epic but right oh, now yeah. there are yeah there aren't didn't as like much the creative as... assembly did something like that with like a oh, really? Wars. Oh, I think it's uh, I think it's sure. just uh I think it's just Okay, it's, I think it's Troy. I think it's Troy. It's Troy. Yeah, I think it's Troy. Because the most we get uh, uh, is like Greek mythology, if I can recall. It's mostly yeah. around Greek mythology. Bro, Total War Troy sucked. Yeah, that's I, what I, I know. Heard, everything so. after Shogun 2 sucked. Oh, everything real. after Shogun 2 sucked ass. So real. Hey, I'm playing hey, Shogun hey, 2 right now. Hey, Warhammer 2 is actually pretty good. Not gonna lie. That's Warhammer, dude. Warhammer. That's War Warhammer. Dude. That's Warhammer. That's not Total War. Yeah. It's just Warhammer. Yeah. Total that's War Warhammer. Warhammer. They can make shit. They can make shit up, and then it will make sense. But for fucking like right. other shit, uh, nah, man. I'm gonna outright say it. I played all the OG fucking the shit back in the day. Shogun, Shogun one, Shogun one. I played Shogun one. At that point, I just Shogun wish for a medieval one. two. I just wish for a medieval remake. Medieval three, but considering uh, Creative uh, Assembly, yeah. yeah no. No. Nah. But yeah, going back on topic on like World War Two, like games. Close combat, and the Company close combat yeah. series. Yeah. Yeah. Close combat series, and then there's Panzers, if I can recall. Oh, oh man, the fucking memories, Jesus Christ. So, uh, going back to Company Virus Two, like most of us has, have played vanilla and of course modded version, so. What are your, what are your guys' thoughts on the modded ver modded version of Company Heroes Two, and which ones are worth playing? All right, honestly, all right, all right. All right. Can honestly, I hit, can I honestly, I hate vanilla. I hate vanilla Zoom. I hate vanilla Zoom so much with a passion. I did. I do not see the need to look at Hans's feet in 4K. 
when I zoom in that close. I don't see the reason to do that and I will never see the reason to uh, do that at all in any of my years playing this fucking game. I just hate the zoom so much. That's why uh, that's why I mostly stuck to modded these days because it, it, it's just a headache when I can't okay, just but... see my units on the screen where I'm supposed to go. Especially okay, when there's a... Again. Especially if there's a machine gun hiding behind the fucking sandbag that I cannot see because For the real? zoom does not let me zoom out to see it properly positioned somewhere in a sandbag hiding behind fucking foliage. It's it's just a, it just makes my brain hurt whenever I think about it. So that's why I play fucking vanilla. And that's not to mention the damage models. Good god. When you just Put two units at the range. Let's get the grenadier. Let's get a austere grenadier and a conscript grenadier. A green cover at max range. They're gonna spend five fucking minutes trying to kill each other. That far away. I mean, like you, you should have already expected it from the first game. From the first game, yes, I know. But it's just, uh, it's just, it hits different. That's company of heroes too at that point. It, it is. It is literally just an arcade. It is an arcade game. It's. It's not. Yeah, I've it was never meant to be realistic. BBs, airsoft battles, basically. Airsoft. Uh, you were saying what? silver earlier. Oh yeah, I was about to say because like, what? What about the mod part, right? What about the gypsy death? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Honestly, yeah, Honestly, had... worth. I would say. Wickinger honestly provides a good balance between arcade and realism. Like a better, I, I would say it, it, it kind of completes the Company of Heroes to experience by like combining, uh, company. I think it did, it did a uh, Company of Heroes. I would say it did a better Company of Heroes three because because of the doctoral battle groups as well. It, it implemented it better. I think the. Uh, Relic just stole that from fucking uh, Wickinger. Spearhead, Spearhead, honestly, to be very quite honest, it's it's full of bloat, bloat, janky shit. Uh, I'm okay for I'm okay for bloat shit, but not to the extent that uh, Spearhead does. Don't uh, don't get me started on Kriegspiel. Kriegspiel is just. Ugh. The Kriegspiel is different. Mm, yes, let me let me make every fucking round an active object world projectile. I should try in that instead of instead of a pixel instead of a fucking hit scan pixel. Going back to light like spearhead again for me, honestly. If I ever go to choose to uh, either Wickinger or Spearhead, I'd rather much go to Spearhead right now, because yeah, as a I person, Spearhead. Yeah, as a person who played Wickinger for like three fucking years, honestly, that's when I that's when I stopped playing Vanilla and I just went modded. And my first choice was uh, Wickinger, but spending time in Wickinger now and then I played Spearhead within this like uh, the last year. With uh, with my fucking friend group. Honestly, the damage models for the uh, for the infantry is just better for me at uh, for this case because uh, when I when I realistically not realistically play a fucking uh, game with infantry against tanks, I will not expect my uh, five conscripted Ost legionaries. They're not Russians. They're uh, just Baltic, Baltic, and other Eastern Europeans who hate the Soviets so much. They banded together under my service as the uh, three wheeling battalion. But that's besides the point. The Soviets charge four tanks at me, and those five squads did not die. They only had like at most two or three models down. And that's a T thirty four. Four T thirty fours with conscripts riding behind them and I managed to defend myself and I only lost a, a handful of soldiers but all of my squads are still intact and I could just reinforce them properly and they charge head on 
granted I was behind green cover but they closed the distance with the uh, with the uh, speed boost ability so quickly and they managed to flank me my uh, machine gun and my truck my command post and I did not die in that entire encounter and I visibly saw my entire unit fighting a T-34 head on which is which is a uh, with its hull gun blasting uh, 7.62 rounds directly at the uh at a Vermac rifleman, he's not dead. That's why, at that moment, I solidified my opinion that I should just play Spearhead at this point. Because the damage models for the infantry are spot on for my case. You just need, you just need to be very careful where to place them. Or who to fight, who to uh, pick battles with. But although, I have to say, the uh, tank combat in Wickinger between uh, Spirit feels uh, more satisfying because um, a 75 a 75 millimeter long barreled not the uh, Panther but the uh, standard K KWK 40 was it KWK L40 for the uh, Panzer F2 or the Panzer 4G that shit does not bounce the front plate of a fucking M4 Sherman or a T34 Unless it hits in a um, like obtuse fucking angle, and it can take it out in just one or two shots, which in this case, when it's fucking spearhead, I still see tanks getting like four shots, four or three shots in before dying, and that's besides the ammo rack ability, the uh, ammo racking ability, the um, the shot that punishes both your fucking barrel takes out your gun your tracks and that kind of stuff it just feels more satisfying and the guns usually don't bounce all that much when compared to what they're fighting against if against a kv1 sure 75s can bounce but uh against a t-34 a head-on engagement yeah no that's uh that's fucking weird but yeah that, uh, that enough about me ranting about fucking honestly i think what what uh i think what uh flippy is actually looking for is it's it's a mix of a uh, men of war assault squad and company of heroes too like, yeah the realistic damage mm. model of a uh, men of war but men without war. the jank of men of war yeah uh, don't yeah, let I, the men don't <laughs> let the men of war fanboys listen to this because uh, every time, <laughs> good God, every time I speak to a person about RTS and I say I play Company of Heroes, so it's a quite a fun game, and then I hear, oh, you play Company of Heroes too, bro? Just play Men of War, it's better, bro. Like, good God, better they're, my asshole, they're bro. the equivalent of yoga of yoga people. You don't ask them, you don't you don't fucking talk to them about yoga. They're just gonna bring it up entirely, just. Oh dude, oh dude, I play uh Men of War, bro. Okay, bro, shoot, whatever. Bro, fucking Men of War has the most atrocious fucking pathfinding in the entire world. If you're in fucking Stalingrad map, you cannot move your fucking units for shit. The it's moment just, you spawn yeah. them in, you're just fucked, dude. You're just fucked. Like on God. I the played Men of War. It's a fun game as well. It's a fun game. Men of War is also a fun game, but I just hate the fucking fanboys. Good God. It is, yeah. It's just annoying to listen to them. Honestly, uh, I've had I've had better experiences in uh Gates of Hell. <laughs> Gates of Hell, good god. Gates of Hell. Smart game. Yeah, most of World War II games I've noticed center around the European theater. However, Pacific Theater offers a lot of interesting ideas variety. such as yeah, variety, such as naval battles and aerial battles. So what are your thoughts on the under representation of the Pacific Theater in World War II games in general. Actually, well, it's uh, right, it's wait, because guys, uh, Krieger, Krieger, right? yeah, yeah. Let, uh, let's let's uh, let's let the actual uh, weeaboo speak. Not uh, the actual Japanese guy. Yeah, the actual, <laughs> yeah, the actual Japanese LARPer. All right, Silver. What's your opinion wait, on this what? matter? I'm sorry, I was not listening at all. <laughs> oh my what god! Oh my god! Uh, so, yeah, he's this man. This man. For uh, for a little bit of background, Silver actually uh, actually does World War II reenactments as a Japanese uh, Japanese combatant. So, uh, Silver, uh, what was your question again, Kaiser? 
uh, uh, what are your thoughts on the under representation of the Pacific Theater and World War II games in general? Uh, I think yeah, it like depend, most like, majority of games nowadays, or at least uh, modern World War II S games, focus mainly on the European theater and sometimes even the the African theater, like uh, Company of Heroes Three now. Yeah, yeah recently, recently the African okay, yeah. theater. So the Pacific theater is left on the, I guess, dust in comparison to the frequency of uh, other theater games. So, what are your thoughts on? Underrepresentation of the Pacific Theater. What, what, why is that so? What could be done in order to make the Pacific or gameplay for a Pacific Theater game uh, interesting or some shit? Uh, you see, that would actually very depend. Because if you think about Pacific, the Pacific Theater, the most famous one would be the fucking uh, the Battle Midway, right? Battle yeah, Midway, Midway dead ass. The Navy. Navy. Like if you think of like Pacific, uh, the Pacific Theater, Navy done. That's all you're gonna think about. But the reason is, like, if you were to be a play, you know, a, a player, and then you made a game, Navy would be very fucking boring. <laughs> that's why it's like. A, so in my head, right? Uh, that's the reason why it's being underrepresented. Uh, uh, fucking underrepresented. Uh, I can't even speak English right now. <laughs> you get what I mean. You get it. I'm not gonna say I mean, it's right? boring per se. Yeah, it's more like. I mean, more, there's more still more the more. the Chinese. Uh... The, the, oh, the, the, oh, there's the, the there's, the there's, a, there's a clear reason. Yeah, the there's a clear reason why no one would want to do a yeah, RTS it's... World War Two game in China. Chinese man, the fucking Chinese. And, and and of course, uh, uh, in the in the Pacific region, like in it, Vietnam, it's mostly, yeah. Cambodia. It's China. mostly it's mostly politics, my dude. It's mostly because of politics, right? Hey, you know how so, modern people are. You need to like yeah. fucking watch. Also, it. because like, like, who would want? Who would want? Just like what? What, you want a Filipino guerrilla faction and a Vietnamese guerrilla faction? People would be people would get bored with that. Yeah. The, and the only actual major factions in the Pacific is what the U.S., the the British, maybe, and like the Japanese. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And a bit of like me, nobody, no, nobody gets tired of like guerrilla esque. Uh, no. Factions. no, no, no oh no, my no. god. No, okay, listen, listen, I listen, hate listen. guerrilla listen. campaigns in RTS. I okay. hate them. Yeah, they're bad. Okay, but here. here I mean, I could see the bad. point of actually putting a uh, putting a partisan faction in that Not sense. really a guerrilla Sometimes. faction, more like a rebellious ty- rebellion type. Yeah. For but example, yeah, you got the GLA. In GLA, yeah, the GLA is fun. 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 The GLA yeah. is fun. Wait, wait, motherfucker. Here's motherfucker, the thing. Motherfucker. Here's the thing. It's just how the developers implement the uh, entire faction into the thing is just unfun it's just and like it's, it's so limited it's so limited the terrain like the gla is fun because most of the terrain in uh generals is good for it but like try to implement that in a small shitty ass island in the middle of the pacific i think i think uh a naval, a naval RTS game would be better, honestly, instead of a land-based. Uh, maybe a few, a few land engagements here and there, but it would be mostly centered around naval action. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Silver, what do you say? This is why I played Call of Duty: World of War on the PS2 mm-hmm. in the past. That's my first uh, World War II game. PS2. That's why what? it became very yes. PS2? PS2, Call of Duty, World yeah, of World War. War. Wait, what? Yeah, the PS2 came all of the three games. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Yes. You didn't World know that. World, World I didn't War, know that. World of World of War, World at War, Call of Duty, World at War. It was one of the first uh, PS2 games I played that introduced me to World War Two games as a kid. And yes, I tried my best to literally manage to pirate or. Managed to look for the two other games. Dude, I'm the, pretty sure that World of War was released in PS3, not two. Two. World of War: Final Fronts. Literally came out right after fucking World, the Call of Duty Three. Real. All right. World of okay, War. Let me let me fucking Spe- what I was I'm speaking all of which. Yeah, go go World of War. Go Final Front. Wait wait. Silver, let Silver talk. Go. All right. So it comes to like the uh, the Pacific Theater, right? 
so yeah, again, the Chinese, the Japanese, the fucking Fil- the Singaporeans, the Filipinos, and the, you have the Americans. So the re- another reason why the fuck like uh, were being very underrepresented was because like in the eyes of propaganda, the Europeans had was literally fucking put first. So most of the propaganda was literally dead ass fucking set on the European front, which is which has been more popularized too. But when it comes to also like the Western Front, as the U.S. as quote unquote, unquote the leading front of that war, they won't represent, of course, other nations because you know they want to look good. It's basically propaganda. No, they they also didn't want to do the Filipinos because well, I'm not gonna get into it, but a lot of fucking bullshit happened during the guerrilla thing. A lot of American soldiers was executed by certain fucking ethnic groups, namely us. <laughs> <laughs> I will... So, yeah, so a lot of shit, right? So a lot of fucked up shit. And then you have like the, the unbelievable fact that the fucking Japanese just, you know, just do not give a flying fuck about bullets. So during the movie of a uh, fucking... Uh, fucking something something ridge. Uh, was it fucking hacksaw ridge? Hacksaw ridge, right? So during the memoirs of uh, Desmond Doss, there were things that it was so unbelievable they had to cut it out of the movie because nobody would fucking believe that. So same thing with like the the fucking Japanese, right? Oh, additionally, the propaganda part. Not to mention the Chinese, my dude. I mean, I guess the only representation you can give the Chinese would be the Doolittle raid, but that's because Doolittle was there. So that's the reason. That's the ad- ad- additional reason why fucking games, right, won't represent the fu- uh, won't represent the, uh, the Pacific Front, because there's no fucking game developer that would actually do make one. For example, if you have the Japanese making it, they can't fucking make a game about their war crimes now, can they? And if they do do it, they're gonna be offending the Chinese, the Koreans, the Filipinos, the Singaporeans, the Malaysians, the Australians, the, ja- what do you the mean Americans. They're gonna put in the- their war crimes they're not even gonna put anything there at all it's just gonna be exactly. japanese exactly exactly which is why it would be dumb and it would be fucking hard it would be soulless so uh there were some games that did actually have like really good portrayals of the japanese faction world of war for one right uh shit was great admittedly <clears throat> and then yeah, <laughs> that's because it's uh, that's because it's Red Orchestra. No, no one, Red Orchestra. Oh, yeah, Red Orchestra, Red Rising, Storm, Rising Storm, Rising Storm, Rising Storm, Storm was Storm. great. Rising Storm, I love that. I love it. I love yeah, every great, single right? match as the Japanese. It's just also additionally the fact, right? So if you were to think about the Japanese faction as a whole, melee would be a like one of the core thing. So if you were to, for example, put the Japanese in Company of Heroes too. Then wouldn't they have fucking the banzai ability? But that would be oh, fucking shit. either overpowered actually, or get gunned down. Right? Actually, actually, that being said, that being said, if I can recall, there is a uh, company of heroes one bot that, that depicts the, the Japanese. Chinese and the Chinese and the Japanese. Yeah, it's a it's a damn good mod as well. It's kind of janky, but it's a damn good mod. It is. It's it's great. If you guys and had then, the opportunity, uh, those who are listening, you, you should give it a try. It's a give it a try. I mean, yes, it's Company of Heroes 1 engine, Company of Heroes 1 mechanics, but still, it's unironically very fun. And then, I'd uh, say, Maybe I'll take a look at it. I'd say, even, uh, if they actually implement the uh, the mechanics just as good. Because, uh, okay, let's see. The, ja- the uh, Chinese faction, for one case, they're uh, for one thing, they're not exactly unified. There are like two factions there that exist. It's the uh, it's the Japanese, oh, no, not the Japanese. It's the uh, it's the communists and then the, the communists and the nationalists and then the warlords. And the warlords, but uh, in this case, for the Chinese faction in the in Complete Heroes Far East mod. They separate the the faction into trees. So uh still it's uh it's just one communist faction and then two uh nationalist factions. In that case, uh it's either you choose the uh it's either you choose the land lease faction, that land least nationalist, or the uh actual nationalist faction themselves, and then you get to choose the communists. 
those are three lines and then they have vastly different uh vastly different uh schools of warfare in this case because the communist of course guerrilla tactics guerrilla warfare and then the um uh, the standard uh, the standard nationalist and then you get the land lease the land lease is very fun you get to choose uh, in the land lease you get to choose either do you want to be supplied by Americans or you want to be supplied by the British <laughs> and I can tell you this the Japanese don't have much fight in them at late game when you throw a fucking Sherman against a Chiha <laughs> I wonder why I wonder why <laughs> yeah <laughs> You can see where I'm going with it. I think there's also one major thing why there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, Pacific Front games. It's just uh, not a lot of uh, World War Two, like World War Two interested uh, gamers are not really Navy focused. They're not Navy focused. They're either infantry, tanks, or aircraft. That's it. There's not a lot of Navy people, just in general. There, yeah. on, there's only a bundle of games oh, that represent yeah. that. You know what, what? man? Like, good God, Battle Stations? Battle Stations Pacific? I love that game. Fun game. Right? Wait, wait. Bro, bro, bro. And ironically, dude, I'd kill. I'd kill for an actual game that's set in the oh, uh, Pacific the Theater. Oh, because, bro, yeah. because actually, if you guys, uh, if people actually... Um, focus or at least look at the stories or the uh, theaters that they're involved with. The, the Asian theater is a massive fucking place. We got the Pacific, we get the Chinese, the Japanese, and we got the uh, Indochina campaigns. We got the Dutch. And let's not uh, let's not forget about the the Indians. All right, something I have to go. I got I have to early and stuff. See you later, dude. Oh, All right. See you later. See you in the mid, man. <laughs> okay. Also, Flippy, uh, I was about to say, dude, if ever like uh, they do decide to like some game developer out there decide to, hey, let's make a fucking Pacific theater map. Literally, you have the Battle of Manila, Battle of Hong Kong, Battle of Singapore, Battle of Papua New Guinea, and you have bat- the Battle of fucking Nanking or the Rape of Nanking. And it's not really Okinawa. a battle. Yeah, okay, yeah. You have Okinawa. You also have like fucking, oh, you know what? Also, uh, Iwo Jima would be a really good fucking game. Iwo Jima Having... is a nightmare. Iwo Jima would be such a good fucking campaign. For that the would Americans, be an amazing campaign. The Japanese, not so much. No, no, it could be both, right? So, like, uh, Japanese side, Iwo Jima, right? You're defending and all that shit, and then you like, just have, like, a hordes, of mar- hordes of Marines, ho- hordes of Coast Guards, hordes of fucking just normal infantrymen coming out while the fucking Japanese instantly just gunned them down. But it, it took it took so much just for the Americans to actually push in to the beach of uh, Iwo Jima. It took them a lot. It killed a lot of Americans. It also killed a lot of Japanese. The Jap- the Americans bombarded Iwo Jima so much uh, that it didn't even do anything to them. That's the funny part. It, do, it ain't doing shit to Iwo Jima. Because they were so dug down. They were so dug in. They were fucking underground. Literally everywhere. Machine gun nests literally behind bushes, grass, everything. It took so much of uh, it took so much American lives just to get the fucking Iwo Jima, and then you had Okinawa, same shit, right? Fucking, they were fighting tooth and fucking, uh, they were fighting like head on, and they were not letting up. And then you have the Philippines, Battle of Manila, one of the most atrocious fucking war crimes in the war. You have Na- Nanking too. Nanking was also fucking atrocious. It's, but then uh... again, you also have the fucking. You also have Battle of Manila, especially in uh, in Tremors. Battle of Manila is literally uh, the Stalingrad of uh, Dude, Asia. The walled city of Intramuros. The walled city of Intramuros during the fucking invasion of the, the uh, the liberation of the Philippines, right? It was so fucking gruesome. It would make fucking people churn if they figure that shit out. Cause imagine this shit, right? They would use bait. Should should I say it? Would it be would it be fine? Well, let's uh, let's keep it PG for the time being. Okay, uh, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Let's not yeah. deep dive into so, the uh, atrocities let, let, that let's just Let's just say we had babies and women kind of receiving the short end of the stick. I uh, guess. Literally. Just like any other country being involved. And you know that one city in China. Yep. Bro. Actually, here's the, here's the, like, the worst story I've heard during the atrocities in the world city of Intermoros. 
but I will say that to you guys later after the podcast. Yeah. That would be uh it might be TOS. <laughs> yeah, that's like it's gonna be a TOS. It's so fucked up. It's literally a TOS. Even if it's just a story. <laughs> just think of the most fucked up thing ever you could do to someone, right? In the shortest span. And that's it. It has to include fire. And then also you have the fucking defense of Singapore. The invasion of Singapore, right? It was a massive disaster. So <laughs> the disaster is an understatement. Yep. Yeah, it was a massive fuck fucky fucky. So that would also be a really good campaign for the Japanese. You have also the Battle of Hong Kong. Uh remember that one dude uh, that basically held out the Japanese for a good amount of time. He, they erected a statue for him. Good campaign for the Brits. You have the Battle of Papua New Guinea. Fucking show them the fear that the Australians were having against fucking veteran Japanese troops. You have fucking Okinawa. You have Iwo Jima. You have fucking Chinese forces in goddamn what? Manchu, not Manchuko. Uh, uh, you get what I mean, basically. Yeah. Also, let's not forget about the fucking Chinese, like literally flooding their own cities back in World War II, just to halt, just to slow down uh, Japanese forces using the Yellow River. That killed millions of civilians, mind you. So that was. But uh, during that lucky. time, it was during already that... messed up because they already know so much of the Japanese atrocities. They got no choice. Yeah, and then here's the other dumb part, right? Uh, Unit 713, and then Unit 713, I won't get too deep into that because, uh, you know, let's just say very, very massive war crime. Uh, and then you also have, like, the, the fact that the Chinese were at that point was to group, uh, was to team up with, uh, with your enemy while doing evil to defeat the bigger evil. You get what I mean? So, ad- ad- additional point to the why the, the Pacific Front wasn't isn't being represented too much is, it's a shame, really, but we would fucking one hundred percent love it. But with how modern how modern people conceive fucking shit right now, I don't think it's gonna be possible. If if, if it was made like fucking what like fucking two thousand fifteen or two thousand sixteen, it might be, still be tolerable. But now, with how fucking politically in depth like everything is, literally fucking make fun of China right now as the U.S. You might literally fucking cause a war. Yeah, we could probably have a real-time strategy game in real life. Oh, oh God. Modern we'll, combat. We'd be playing Politically, fucking... yeah, that's also, China is just petty. That's also we'll be playing IRL. No, we'll that's also a mod for Company of Heroes 1. If modern you guys know. Com- oh, modern combat. God. It's literally China against Bro. US. But yes, it's also a fun mod. You guys should definitely try that as well. Dude, Super like, mod. Command and Conquer Generals predicted, like, modern times. Modern times? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> modern politics. For fucking real, my dude. Yeah. Damn, bro. Like, World War II really is an interesting time period to ponder upon. So, it's kind of amazing how many games revolve around that time era is available available for us to play. And, of course, this doesn't end the countless things that we, we could talk about in regards to World War II. However, it is getting late for the most of us, and unfortunately, yep. we have to stop it here. But do not fret for the viewers out there. We will continue with another podcast, of course, with the same group or set of people here. So, thank you, Silver, Flippy, Mirai, and Stalin was gone, and also yeah, Sultan. For sharing us your knowledge and experience about World War II related games. So if you like this podcast, follow React7 on Twitch. If you're listening this in YouTube, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel, The Magmatic Sage, and you better like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. That is all, and thank you. See you guys next time.